All right, people, welcome to another edition of the New Breed Show, the world's best metal show, talking about everything brutal, new, death, hard, slam, grind, thrash, core, metal. I am one half of your hosting duo, Jay Horsecow. With me, I have my partner in crime, the notorious T.I.M. Tim Anderson Jr., how's it going, Tim, in this balmy, balmy day we've got going on here? It's great. I fucking love it. It's fucking terrible. And joining us again, um, the man, the myth, the producer, the um, the polymath musician, bands like D.O.G., Graveview, uh, Mood Ring, and Body Box, Mr. Hunter Young. Hunter, how's it going? Going great. Thank you for having me again. We are we are stoked to have you. So let's let's get the elephant out of the room, dude. That's a fucking monster tour that they announced today. Fucking uh, Body Box, Spite, Boundaries, No Zodiac. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Can't forget Vatican. Oh, and Vatican. And, and Vatican. I texted Tim and I'm like, yo, it's in Jer- it's in Jersey. We're going. We're going to Asbury, dude. I won't be there for that day, but yeah. I'm ah. still I'm super stoked for that whole tour to happen. Um, it's been in the works for a while. So it's definitely super good for Body Box to get out of the, you know, to leave the trailer park, if you will. So <laughs> That's yeah, awesome, that's, man. And that's, that's a hell a of a lineup. Crazy tour, yeah. yeah, it's a stacked lineup, too. It's not like all it's not all bands that all kind of sort of sound the same, right? Like you got your deathcore stuff, you got stuff body box does, you got boundaries, which is basically kind of like a tough guy metalcore. You have Vatican, which is kind of experimental, and they're doing some weird electronic shit. And then you got no zodiac coming out of the woodwork, who I thought were done. Yeah, right? they're they're like offensively heavy. Yeah, that's their comeback. Um, it's gonna be fucking sick for sure. I think uh I'm going to fly out for like the last leg of it to like go hang out with the homies and stuff and play some of the shows, but I have some prior obligations that I cannot make it for. So fair, fair enough. But even still, that's congratulations for you, man. Cause that's fucking awesome. Right. That's, that's, that's and that's a big <laughs> tour too. It's not like a week or two week joint. Like they're doing the whole States, right? It's like almost a month, month and a half. It's fucking long and there's routing there and back. So uh, it's, it's a fucking doozy for sure. Yeah, I think it's all of June and a couple of days in July and what, half of May, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's wild, man. It starts May 20th, which is like around when Mood Ring plays Rockville. So, oh, okay. So they have to like route all the way out to it, do the whole fucking states, go back to California, because by being in California, it's going to end there. And then Body Box, Vatican, and Boundaries have to go all the way back. All the way back the across the country. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I'm, I'm feeling it for them right now, you know? Yeah, right. But it's, but it's good that they've got routing where they can line up shows, right? Like, cause I can't imagine we, we just interviewed um, Scott Alderman from Tattoo the Earth, where he talked about, you know, when he did their routing and they started in Portland, Oregon. The, the second show was in Lawrence, Kansas. And the third show uh, a day later was in the Meadowlands in New York, in New Jersey. Yeah. So they, it's like, dude, we literally just cooked across the country. It was unreal. Yeah, that is super rough. Um, yeah, I don't know. Routing is crucial. Uh, speaking of Vatican again, they did that Sea Space Cowboy run with uh, Rismead Razor as well, like earlier this year. And they routed straight to California. Like they played no shows, just drove straight out. And it was just like, holy That's fuck. That's nuts. Yeah, it's rough. So uh, I wouldn't last from here till fucking Virginia. I'd be like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Tim, you ain't coming to see me in fucking Jersey, dude. What are you kidding I hate, me? <laughs> I can't stand driving or being oh, – I hate it. <laughs> Honestly, same. I notoriously – people who know me and people who have worked with me in the past would know that I fucking hate touring. But I haven't got to do it in a long time because of, you know, pandemic shit. And I don't know. I have to at this point, you know, like with – Moodering, trying to develop and become a larger band and same thing as body box like that's i have to you know yeah so it's just kind of at this point i love playing shows don't get me wrong it's the coolest thing in the world but it's uh the in-between is you know it sucks yeah all the other shit sucks that absolutely yeah yeah yeah. we would play weekends in my band and i'm like or my old band i'm like oh why when is this over (laughs) yeah for sure i like I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll it, it's the question can be asked later. Okay. Um, just to wrap up on that topic, just pretty much, uh, yeah, I don't know. I really didn't like touring, especially like I kind of stopped doing it 
around like 2017 with my old bands and stuff. And then I got a break. I got a lot of time to write way more music. But then like not having the option to tour, like I couldn't even go do it if I wanted to. Now that I can, I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's the devil in the extremes, right? When the guy, when you're on the road, you want to do nothing but be home. When you're home, you want to do nothing but be on the road. It's Yeah, it's an interesting lifestyle, musicians leave. Exactly. Yeah, I, I've never even really toured. Like the weekends we would do would be like, yeah, different states. But like if you can go home and sleep that night, that's not tour. Nah. No. <laughs> Yeah, you're like right. even driving six hours to go to I'm like, come on, fuck this. Like, I hate that shit, man. What's the, furthest, to, what's the furthest away you ever played, Tim? Uh, I would have I'll, I'll think of that before the end of this. All right. I wanted to ask though, I don't remember if we talked about this last time, but in Trailer Park Blues, that that first song on the body box EP, when you guys play that live, dude, like that has that mosh part has to just cause fucking mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> it it's first up too it's it's so funny um we we play it first like literally every single show since we've started playing shows and it's just been it's honestly hilarious like body box is just the dumbest band in the world and everything about it is like so heavy and comical and just you know the subject matter is also just like taboo and ridiculous so it's just yeah it's it's awesome yeah it's like it's like not like world ending like hard, but like the way you guys do it, where it like swings in between the double bass parts. I'm like, dude, that is just like, it, it's like I've said it to Jay a million times. Like that part right there is just so fucking ridiculously <laughs> heavy. Like I have to like I I listen to it. I'm like, fuck me, go back like twenty seconds. Because <laughs> it has like that slow two step in it, and then it just fucking beats the shit out of you. I love that shit, man. Yeah, I love it. It's a uh, body box is definitely like the most wild band I've ever played in for sure. Like the show, like show wise. I mean, I had no intention of actually being a full member of body box. Um, I was just kind of writing and doing it when I could. And I played guitar for the first show. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Like, this is fun. <laughs> this- so. Yeah. When, when, when I've showed people that they're like, dude, like this is the kind of stuff that like I need to hear because a lot of people get like, a lot of death metal bands that get praised nowadays, I think, are like you listen to them and you're like, eh, like in my opinion, I'm like, eh, it kind of just sounds like a wannabe DS. Little cookie like, cutter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, eh. but when you hear bands like Vomit Forth and the Body Box stuff, like that's the kind of shit I want to hear these days, man. Vomit Forth, the fucking homies, man. I love that band. That That is just like, like even some of their parts like i listen to it i'm just like where do these guys come up with this shit like it's when they came down on that frozen soul sing with sugabog tour um we opened the orlando date and it was extra violent and the dm people were very angry um <laughs> but uh i uh i talked to kane their singer a lot and basically was like yo if y'all want to come chill if you have an off day tomorrow come spend the night and they came down, crashed, and we they ended up staying for two nights. And uh, my homies and I like took them out in the woods, and like we went like mud and, and shit. I, I did see that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we did a bunch of water shit. It was awesome. Yeah, I I've done that before down there. That shit is crazy. It's dope. Yeah, we went like in the middle of the night, like thirty minutes off the grid. Like if something would have gone wrong, we were fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it was dope. But there's something to be said to your point, Hunter, about bands that don't take themselves so seriously. Because, like, you know, like we were talking about before we started recording, it seems like everybody wants to take everything so seriously nowadays. And bands yeah. like that and Sanguasugabong and the bands that they, they kind of take a sense of humor to what they do, it's kind of more appealing than, like, the super serious, you know. I think so, too. So the hard thing with Body Box is, and not to speak for him, but a lot of that stuff, like, is funny but it's definitely stuff that harrison like our singer went through i mean harrison's like 23 and went through like a serious drug problem like at the age like in like his teen years you know what i mean like i mean like actual drug problems you know what i mean like not like oh man i drink too much like who doesn't yeah yeah. but so he he's like been through shit too a lot of that stuff he's like writing about like his life and stuff like that and uh it's it's on one hand it's like it's like damn like you have an outlet for this but on the other hand he's like i he realizes like whether it's consciously or subconsciously like this is a fucking ridiculous taboo like we literally label ourselves double wide death metal and you know like it's very like owning like that like you know it's it's florida man shit you know so 
but you own it and you turn it into something better, right? Like you get re- you you <laughs> by owning it, you almost remove the stigma from it and make something out of it. <laughs> For sure, I completely, I completely agree. Yeah, I think I think the thing nowadays too is like I like a well produced record, but it comes to a point where shit is overproduced. Like that's why I can't get into like the new. Um, God damn, now I'm forgetting. Jay, it was one of your favorite records last year. What, Archspire? Um, yeah, that's why I really can't get into the Archspire stuff that much. It's just too, it's too on the grid for me, and it's just too polished. Like, I love stuff that has a little bit of rawness to it, but it's still punchy. You know what I mean? That's the, uh, that's the, uh, sweet spot. You know, it's anyone like, of my friends who also records like we'll joke about it because there's so many bands that come to us that will be like so i want it to be like vintage and raw but like still hit the same and you're like god, god damn it you know yeah, like yeah. i want it to sound like it's 100 years old but also you know sound like it's brand fucking new at the same time is basically what you're saying um yeah. i'm one of it, them assholes <laughs> it's a- Hard, it's a hard line to walk. I'd like to think that I've figured it out for the most part, like myself and my partner, Brandon of the Swamp Sound. Like we try our best. That's like the line we like to toe. When we like are supposed to do like hyper produced, like compressed, polished stuff, I usually feel pretty fucking lost. I'm like, oh God. I don't even know how to make a record fucking sound like that, man. Well, I mean, I think that certain bands, like like your one band calls for like the little bit of a more polished sound. Like the DO, the, it's a DOG or do you say dog? It's dog. Yeah. Well, like the dog stuff where where you have like the like the hyper focus break parts and stuff. I think you need that kind of production. But I kind of think like the body box stuff, like that production is perfect for me because it hits good in my stereo, but it's not like so overly done where you're just like uh, yeah. every song starts to sound like it's just the same exact thing you know what i mean yeah for sure it's it's a little blown out on purpose if you will you know what i mean like it's got it's got a little grit left in there yeah i um, think a lot of people started realizing that if you go into the red a little bit that you start to get a little bit of a natural distortion with it you know mm-hmm. yeah, exactly exactly I, and i think some of that stuff I mean, the, the highly technical stuff, right? It does need to, if you're trying to differentiate all the different bass, all the different drum hits and all the different riffing, right? It does need to be a little bit cleaner. I mean, like when you look at the speed at which, you know, OG Cannibal Corpse and Morbid Angel were playing versus the speed at like Adam Jarvis or the guys from Margin play, right? It yeah. does need to be a little cleaner, but you go in knowing that it's going to sound a little bit sterile and snap to a grid because they're trying to make sure you hear the 308th notes that John Longstreth is playing with his feet, right? It's, it's, and, and while it's impressive and you can appreciate it, you kind of lose that organic, you lose that organic Igor Cavalera slowing up and speeding down during the breakdown in Dead Embryonic Cells, where you can hear him fall in and out of the beat. And it's still like, that's fucking awesome, right? Or Dave Lombardo, yeah. who's notoriously sloppy, right? Like, I mean, it, it kind of lends, lends a human organic piece to it that when everything is so clean, you're like, I probably could have done this at home with a drum machine. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I agree. I do. I do see what you're saying, though, and agree with the, the school of thought of something like like tech death having to be as polished as it is to literally differentiate what is being played. So, I mean, like, imagine if Eating Back to Life was done like ultra polished. You wouldn't like it as much. Yeah. Mm-mm. 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 I would. Like, I think. I- I think records like the silent circus, like from BT Bam, I think that production right there for me is like pinnacle right there. Like it's, it's kind of raw, but it still has that organic new sound to it. I think that's like where the, I draw the line kind of. It's not like, yeah, it's not like Uber compressed to hell and back. Like, it's not like just like a sine wave. Like it's not, yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, like, like Determination by God Forbid, I think is probably the most perfect production ever. Or Fear Factory is obsolete, but I feel like them records have to sound like that for the type of music they are. Obsolete is mm. obsolete, my favorite Fear Factory, and I think like <laughs> music, that's, it sounds fucking incredible. Oh, it's fucking incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, a, be- it's a beautiful record. Like there's no better, way, no better way to describe it. It's a beautiful record. My friend Trenton, every single time, uh, edge crusher comes on he's like notorious like you know super edge dude and i'm just always like this is a song about me beating your ass <laughs> it's fucking awesome so it's happened many times he knows it's a good foot 
So since the last time we talked, man, a lot's been a lot has went down, you know, with you guys getting signed and all that stuff. So how how did all that come about? I think by the time we had talked last time, we had already signed contracts. And I think I was just in, you know, good boy mode, not speaking on it. Yeah. Well, definitely, because I remember I sent you all empty me out after the podcast, and that was the single yeah. they were. So um how did it come about? It's a it's a pretty I not not to cut you off, but I think it's a pretty perfect label for you guys for that. Yeah, band. it's a good fit. Yeah, yeah. Per, I mean it's perfect. The best thing about it too was is essentially like they were down to negotiate and down to hear out the things that we wanted as a band. And I and the rest of my band, like Moodering knows that it's a Moodering's a large undertaking. You know what I mean? Like it's it needs a lot of attention. It's very high maintenance. Like it's not just like the standard metal core signing where, you know, a label takes a hundred grand, sign 10 bands for 10 grand each. And they throw the fucking, you know, spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. Like it, it can't be like that. You know what I mean? Um, they were willing to give us what we wanted to make the record. Um, and kind of just, I was very adamant, you know, along the lines of like, Hey, it'd be really fucking cool if you didn't sign a band that sounded like us in the next, you know, foreseeable future, you know, to, to distract from us because a lot of, you don't want to compete like with your own, you know, and uh, yeah. I want to make friends. Like, I don't want to have like, you know, weird competition in that sort of sense. They're very understanding of that. And we went back and forth for a long time. And finally, you know, we were talking to them and a handful of others and I, it just seemed like the best decision. So yeah, UNFD is cool. Their their philosophy is definitely less we work for this band or a band works for us. It's more like, hey, let's get shit done as it's so that's I, I like that a lot. That's cool. The collaborative nature, I'll bet, goes a long way as opposed to you work for me, I signed you, where's my album? You know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and if something's like not right, or you know, if something's like weird is happening or just general like unhappiness is going on, like they can talk to me about it and vice versa, and it won't be like a big blow you know yeah that's the so. way it should be too like they shouldn't be out just looking to get your 360 deal off of your merch and your music and shit like that's just fucking crazy to me no 360s <laughs> yeah like let the band live a little bit for fuck's sake man like there's a lot of bands i think they hear label wants to sign us but we're gonna give them everything just because i, th- I feel like a lot of people are like well we're on a label i kind of like uh made my musical career because a lot of people are just out there in a band just to be like well i was on a label i accomplished that but i think a lot of people nowadays you don't really need it yeah it's the, world, the world has changed but there's bands changed. that are really good like mood ring that i think will you know i'm trying to think of the word i always mess up when i'm trying to make us say a big word like i think <laughs> <laughs> like J- Jay so used to this, but I-, I think a band like Mood Ring is will be affected in a good way by being on that label. I'm just I, I can't think of the word I'm trying to say, but I mean our reach has definitely grown exponentially since then. Th- that's what I'm essentially trying to say. Like your reach will be better and all that stuff because I think the the genre that you guys are in, whether you want to call it new metal or people are calling it like gay, like Rocky gays or whatever the fuck people come up with nowadays. I think that's the stuff nowadays that kids are attaching themselves to. And I we think love- being on a label like that is going to help you guys greatly. I think Where so if it's too. a band, like say not, not talking anything bad on dog, but like, I think dog kind of can speak on its own because it's in that genre of the brutal metal core stuff. It's like, a metal- that makes sense to you. Yeah. Completely obvious. Um, I'll come back to the dog conversation later, but, um, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely cool. Um, they don't, there's no like idea that like really gets shot down on our end. And if we don't like something, it's the philosophy is like, well, we're not going to make you do anything that you don't want to do. So. Yeah. Like I think the video you guys did for empty me out was like a cool concept. And I think a lot of people gravitated yeah. towards that. Like you haven't seen anyone do something like with the vampire effect and, the Lost Boys thing. I thought it was super fucking... Yeah, I um, thought it was really unique. Yeah, it was. It was great. And the video was shot well. I think you you guys did yourselves a fucking, you know, not a service, service but... A, a, yeah, a service, yeah. Yeah, service doing that. I mean, we literally looked like the fucking Lost Boys, so why not? Oh, you know? It was fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Like, people... I, I, like, I posted the video, and people that I, like... A lot of my friends are like, it's fucking Pantera, Metallica, Megadeth. 
and they even heard the stuff and were like, yo, that's fucking cool, man. Like, I really like that band. I'm like, wow, I'm surprised. That's the, that, yeah, it's good to hear. I think that Moodering is an incredibly accessible band. I mean, my friends are like hardcore kids and like DM dudes. And I have the like the occasional like snide comment about Moodering. But besides that, the majority of them seem to be like, yo, band is awesome. Like, it's just cool music, you know? So I appreciate Absolutely. that. I mean, like, there's obviously like, the ongoing joke is that I play in a death metal band. I sing for a butt rock band, but like, oh, well, like, all right. <laughs> I mean, it's not like there isn't a history in hardcore of guys leaving behind their hardcore band to do something much bigger and much better. Uh, Fall Out Boy, uh, Chad Gilbert from Newfound Glory, um, the Spirit Box. Right. They used to was I wrestled a bear once. And now, yeah, look, yeah. I mean, uh, there's I, I and I dare say that people who come from uh, musicians and artists that come from the more extreme reaches of music might have a better ear or a better grasp upon what's going to be more acceptable because they're used to playing something that's not. I don't know. Maybe that's a theory that might be need to be unpacked. There's some science there for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like you said, Jay, you have Andy going in from Race Trader to Fallout Boy. Like, that's a crazy train. Yeah, Arma Angelus. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's kind of nuts, right? I mean, funny story about that. Um, we have a hardcore band that we do kind of on and off called Infiltrate. And um, especially before pandemic, like, we were just, you know, essentially like, which is to have another band to play local shows. But it got a little bit of hype and we played a. Uh, magnitude and sect andy's i know another one of andy's bands were doing those i remember during our set i was playing and i turned around and i was like holy fucking shit andy from fallout boy is like standing behind my amp i was like what the fuck and i had no idea he was in sect and i was like what is happening right now <laughs> how drunk am i <laughs> yeah them dudes been, are super cool to talk they've been to quiet today. for a minute haven't they they did that one album and they haven't done much since I'm That's because sure they, they did um the other band too. Uh uh Chris or what's his name from Earth Crisis? That's Insect as well. Oh yeah. Um uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. They, blood they tooth and nail, other, blood right? and nail, something like that. Yeah. 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 I can't remember. It, it's the dudes from Undying and um yeah, yeah. Die Cho or not Die. I forget. I can't even remember. But and I that, got you. Because of that tour, I was just talking about that has a homie from Magnitude in it as well. Oh, okay. oh wow. Okay. God, you, all these all every all the young guys like literally know each other. it doesn't matter where you're from anymore everybody knows everybody it's hilarious the internet man like and also most people i know including myself started touring when they were really young you know so yeah it's, it's like it's like we talked to aj he's in fucking las vegas and we'll, we'll be like yeah we had what's his name on oh yeah it's my boy what <laughs> dude's in massachusetts how the fuck do you know him and yeah. it's like you said oh the internet touring oh okay <laughs> Most of his band is like from the East Coast. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, with uh, with uh, Kane and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good old Kane. You've yeah, sounded either- like Gavin Rosdale and Eyeball. I love that shit. Yeah. Do what you- the fuck was that? Do either of you have Kane on social media? Uh, I uh no. Don't think so. No. Absolutely insane. <laughs> <laughs> we we sat here the other day like. I had a, a bunch of homies in the studio and we were just reading his social media posts, almost pissing our pants. It's in, like, it's just out. <laughs> just, just un, unreal. Yeah. When so, we had him on the podcast, he was literally like laid back in his chair like this. The whole, that shit was hilarious to me. Yeah. It was, it he's, was a, it was a fun episode. He's a funny motherfucker. Oh yeah, he is. He's got a, you could definitely tell he's got a sense of humor. So uh, Hunter, regards to mood ring, what, I mean, you said you got, was it rock bills coming up? Um, what else, what else is being planned? What else is going on? We are doing a full U S uh, right after Rockville. I can't say who it's with yet, but we have to go because we were supposed to do that tour this spring. I'm pretty sure I would be out, out on it right now, actually. Yeah. Um, that can't swim run, but that fell through because of the Omicron scare. Um, but yeah, with us like trying to push a record out and stuff here soon, um, we have we literally have to. So, so, so you guys are you guys have a record done? Yeah, and have for a long time. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's good to uh, hear. Good to hear. I think we 
started it in like May of last year. Oh, okay. um, and I don't know. I we wrote like I think between all of us and our producer Austin like thirty some odd songs. Oh wow! Oh, shit. And then just kind of picked the ones that we liked. I mean, we definitely have enough to release the record and like have another EP after, you know, or so, or something like there's, there's extra that's good enough to do something with as well. So how does that process work Hunter? Like, how do you land on, we've got a bucket of songs and we need to put 11 on an album. Is it process of elimination? Is it voting? Like, how do you, how do you guys actually, cause that, I'm sure everybody has songs that one person may really like this one or the other person may really like that one. How do you actually get that consensus to, to figure out what's on the, itself we only ran into the issue of one particular song like you know a group fighting for versus the other group being like fuck this song let's move on or not even fuck this song. like we have better um we only ran into that with one song and it didn't it actually didn't end up making it um but do i think it's like good enough to be revisited yeah the the beautiful thing about mootering is is the majority of the band like are you know producers at least to an extent you know what i mean like so everyone has the ability to write like kind of on their own and do their own thing. And uh, also another beautiful thing about mootering is, is no one ever wants like the too many cooks in the kitchen type vibe. You know what I mean? Like we, mm-hmm. I, if I see that someone else has a good idea going on, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, yeah, where's my fucking input? You know what I mean? Like who cares? So our guitar, Sean is especially good about that. You know, if he's, if he sees a flow going, he's just going to let it happen. So, but Sean's also completely capable of writing a great song by all by himself. You know what I mean? Okay. So was Kayla and so was Lindy. Lindy's probably the best lyricist in the entire band. I, I'll tell you this: after I write an entire song and come up with vocal melodies, the last thing I want to do is come up with words. You know, I'm shot. So, <laughs> right. So it's a, uh, it's definitely it's definitely cool. Um, most a lot of the songs that we cut, at least fifteen of them were like the majority of my songs i had no problem letting them go i just kind of realized that what we were writing on the spot in the studio with austin and you know the rest of the band like just was better um dom from dog slash bad luck um actually flew in and worked on the record with us as well so he worked on the ep a bit too so it was cool to have him back jay you see his cat in the background oh yeah yeah (laughs) You just tore down your post. Yeah, I'm like, this is my life, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was at a meeting today, and the, one of the fuckers got behind me and threw a whole ta- a whole container of push pins. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, cat, my cat just ran into to the room and just tore the body box flag off the wall and is now leaving. <laughs> so yeah, it's something to say. You, you were talking. I'm just watching it in the corner. Like, uh oh, yeah, this isn't <laughs> gonna be good. Did they start swinging off shit. Yeah, she's bad. She's bad. <laughs> that's fucking funny man really so, so you got a you got a whole boatload of songs lined up you got a full album uh u.s tour coming after that um what what else hunter what else is keeping you busy what do you well let's put it this way what are you doing up until the point where you play rockville and then you head out on the road um mostly just recording other bands um i worked with like a larger rapper recently who was trying to like do metal and stuff so we did that um waiting for that to come out um trying to think of the ones i can talk about weeping from new jersey is it did another three songs with me and they're coming back to do an lp before i go on tour and yeah it's that band is fucking insane yeah i hear Uh, you talking about them a lot and the stuff i heard is definitely good they're fucking nuts dude like it's just so visceral like I don't know. It reminds me of like, it's like HM2 vitriol, but with like fun parts, like they still have mosh riffs, you know? So it's not just like all, you know, all business, no pleasure. Like they're like 220 BPM, like super fast, like super aggressive. But like when it's time to give it to you, like they, they said, you know what I mean? So that's a requirement, you know, not breakdowns, not music, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, are are right, you doing, right. are you recording the drums as well? Yeah, I have been. What I'll oh, do okay. is I'll, I'll run out a studio and then I'll work with another engineer or do it myself. And so, then you bring it to where you're sitting right now. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I definitely yeah, that, can't. That's cool, man. Can't do drums here. Um, <laughs> the goal is to 
buy a house and build out a really dope studio. And I'd like to maybe have some other engineers who work out of there as well. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I have a, I split my whole company with my homie, Brandon, who actually lives in the Bronx and we work remotely. Like I take over his computer and like vice versa. And essentially anything that's come through, he's worked on for like the last like six, seven months. And I think both of our products have greatly benefited from it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been fucking awesome. Before I go, it's just mostly just recording. Um, and then Mootering has a bunch of videos and stuff we have to shoot before then. So, we need to- so back, back to what you're just saying. So you remotely go into his computer and, like, say you can work on, like, something that he recorded and vice versa? Yeah, like, we do it every day. That's badass, dude. That's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's definitely cool. And there's, like, a plug-in that you put on, like, your stereo out of, like, whatever DAW you're in. And it'll just send me like whatever he's listening to and like vice versa. Oh, wow. So, now, are you using when you do that through, are you using your processing power or his? It's if I'm on his computer, it's his processing power. And if he's on mine, it's mine. Dude, that's yeah. fucking interesting, man. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag and stuff. I'm hoping, I'm hoping as time gets, you know, progresses, it gets, you know, streamlined a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's cool. Wow. We did, uh, we worked on one record that way because I was like really sick of working on it. And I was like, oh my God, help me. And uh, I was like, damn, that sounds fucking awesome. And then we did it for Body Box. And then we've just continued to do it since then. Oh, so he's the guy that, oh, okay. Now I see you. Okay. You can yeah. remember you saying when you put that EP out, you're like, me and my buddy did this. And it's, it, it sounds amazing. Dude. Yeah. He's like, a, you know, it's like, it's 50 50. So it's, kind of sounds like what len i'm sure you i'm sure you know len carmichael it kind of sounds like what he does up here like i don't know if he does remote stuff but i know he opened up like a newer studio because i recorded when he was doing it out of his basement and it would sound amazing len is fucking sick um yeah i've met len a couple times uh played some shows together like in jersey area with one of my old bands and um yeah len is great yeah, so I know he got a new studio and like he has a bunch of engineers that work out of there now, which I think I think it's cool. Like you get to bring, you know, a bunch of different bands to mm-hmm. to everybody. And maybe if somebody wants to jump in and engineer or mix, like I, I think it opens up a whole spectrum for bands to pick and choose what they want, you know. Kinda it's what I want to do. I wanna like build some type of like team or like squad. You know, I want I want the swamp sound like ideally to end up becoming like a collective, you know. Because certain people are working are better at working on certain stuff than others. You know, if you wanted, as we were talking earlier, like a, you know, 2022 super polished, insane sounding, you know, like mechanical sounding record, I don't know how to give that to you, you know? But um, I, I have plenty of friends and, com- you know, people in my life who, who definitely do. What's the what's the most left of center stuff you've ever worked on, Hunter? Like, like not, e- not even as much outside of your comfort zone, but... I never thought I would work on something like this and yet here I am doing it. That's a great question. I don't know. I I love when Jay stumps people like I got like, you know, like Sade comes in and it's like Hunter Young, I want you to do my album, which is totally left of center to everything else you've ever touched. Right. Like, I don't think I would struggle with Sade that bad just because I, (laughs) You know, Reno fanboy. So I think that one I could probably grasp a little bit. Um, I mean, really like probably experimenting with the new moodering stuff, but at the same time, I don't mix moodering. So it's not that scary. I can kind of be like, mm. here's really, you know, fumbled fucking idea. And someone else <laughs> has to make, it, make sense of it. Um, I don't know. I've, I guess like nothing really. I, I just like, I, I couldn't do like modern deathcore really i just don't know what i I don't know what to do with it like mix wise you know i really don't can i sit there and write it with you and produce the tracks like yeah all day will it sound good yes is it going to sound how you want it to probably not like sonically you know it's not going to be all shiny right like you're like like you like people shouldn't expect you to put out like a joey sturgis sound or like a 100 percent. i don't i don't know how i mean I understand like the samples being used and stuff like that. Like I, I know what the guitar tones are, you know, obviously I know how to like EQ and compress things, but I don't aesthetically that just like, isn't, it's the last thing I want to like come out of my monitors, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I a hundred percent agree. I hate, I hate that shit. 
<laughs> nothing, nothing will ruin a record for me more than ultra polished shit. Like, like we were saying earlier, too I clean, think, too clean where it doesn't have to be. Yeah. I think it has its time and its place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I do, I think fucking, you know, what's like a really popular, you said spirit box earlier. Should spirit box have a raw mix? Fuck, absolutely not. You know right. what I mean? Right. But should body box have spirit boxes mix? No, it'd be terrible. No, it would be too polished. It would sound weird. Like it would almost set off like your uncanny valley. It would it would just throw you off? Like ah. My homie said that phrase to me the first time the other day, and I can't stop saying it now. But uncanny uh, valley. I was looking at some fake shoes the other day, and I said, "I'm feeling." <laughs> I was like, "I'm getting uncanny valley right now." <laughs> so I can't. This, this is yesterday. Yeah. No, I completely, I completely agree. I think that the biggest thing, and I know like some people would disagree with me. I don't think that in terms of like recording, producing, mixing, anything like has to be scientifically correct. Like I like fuck the rules. You know what I mean? Like do it however, however you want. But also like the, the only thing that matters is the aesthetic. Like is the aesthetic correct for this music? Yeah. Are you using the right hmm. snare drum? Is the kick? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Does this have enough dirt? Like does, is this painful to listen to? Like it need like some stuff should be painful to listen to. I think a good person to reference for nailing the aesthetic of a band would be Arthur Rizik. Like none of Arthur's mixes sound the same at all, but every band he records just, it just sounds like that band should sound that way. To give you some examples of what he's done, um, Power Trip, Nightmare Logic, that record sounds exactly how it should. And then on the other hand, he did uh, Candy, uh, Good to Feel, record sounds exactly how it should sound. Um, I forgot how fucking good that album is, man. I got to dig that one out tomorrow. That album is amazing. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's so fucking sick. Um, I was a big Malfunction fan too, so it was easy transition, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, they were in Malfunction? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. I always thought that Malfunction was like just buried alive, but Florida or wherever. Where are they from again? Uh, Virginia. That's right. I, yeah. I, I I was just like, oh, that's buried alive, but wherever they're from, it just sounded exactly like buried alive to me. That's why I like it. So yeah, me too. <laughs> I love yeah. that 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 stuff was good. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely um, I think Arthur Rizik. I don't want to misquote this, but I'm pretty sure Arthur Rizik did that Division of Mind full length, which is okay. mm-hmm. my which is my like favorite thing to come out of hardcore in a long time. Yeah, it was good. <clears throat> I saw it. Body Box played the Three and Deep CD release show, and we opened it and still had an insane fucking set. But the division, division of mine set at that show, like I was just standing on stage, like holy fuck, this is this is nuts. So, I love. I also just like love like what we call mysterious guy hardcore. You know, none of them hardly have like social media. The bands don't have social media. I just, right. I like that shit, man. You know, I like when bands aren't accessible. So, Dude. Just think if like Primitive Man put out a a recording and it was so ultra polished, like it would not be as nightmarish as it sounds. Mm -mm. I think Caustic, the record before the last one, is one of the best sounding records I've ever heard in my entire life. Like fucking nightmare music. (laughs) Really is. It is, dude. It's fucking sleep deprivation. It's like sleep. What's that shit called? Where you like you sleep deprivation? Yeah, yeah. Or sleep paralysis demons. It's it's like sleep paralysis nightmare (laughs) fucking shit, dude. It's crazy. (laughs) That shit is fucking nuts. We, uh, or I used to work this job out in the middle of the woods and, um, it was like an hour and a half. I drove there to and from work every day. I went at 8am and I came home at 12 at night and, um, (sighs) yeah, it was, I can't talk about it here. Um, (laughs) just to be honest, um, it was in the gray area of the law. I, um, I would put that record on my drive home every single night, just like in the black of the woods and it would just like make my mental state even worse, but I love it. It was like it's like fucking watching a horror movie, like on the way home. You know what I mean? Like something that like truly like fucked you up. And just for an hour and a half, that record just beat the shit out of your brain. That, that shit is insane. Have you have you ever heard have you heard the blindfolded and led to the woods stuff? No. What the yeah, fuck is dude? That's another record that just fucking puts you in this state of mind. Like you listen to it, you're just like, what the fuck is going on right now? I got down in my notes right now. Like, it's so fucking brutal, and, like, just the production on it. Oh, man. There's another band that that just put out a Doom record. I forget what the fuck they're called. I'll look through my phone and find it for you by the time we're done. If I, you like, like Doom stuff like that, you should check out Worm from Florida. That's what, that was my yep. favorite record last year. 
Yeah, but like worm with an O, not with a V. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you talk okay. about Forever Glade, right? Yes. Oh, Fucking records, amazing. That was one of my favorite. Yeah, I think it was my favorite record last year. It's super sick. It's funny because uh, Leander, our like point of contact slash like Moodring's like personal A and R guy at UNFD. I saw him post it the other day, and I was like, I was like, what the fuck do you know about this? <laughs> you know? It turns out he likes the weird shit that I like. So I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, the so, riff, the riffing in that just caught me r- instantly. Like I remember hearing that single they put out. I was like, yeah, this is fucking the kind of shit I like right here. The production uh, r- was perfect. I mean, yeah. Rumor has it they're going to become like an actual band and start playing shows too. So, oh okay, because that record I'm like almost positive was just like one person. Oh shit! Okay, god damn, yeah. really? Now I like it even more. I only I only know that band because of like my connection to Night Shift merch. Um, Kareem, who runs that, put me onto it when it was like about to be a thing, and then when it came out, I had no idea it was going to be as good as it turned out. You know what I mean? I was fucking blown away. Yeah, me, yeah, me too, man. That was a definitely top three favorite last year. We don't have a whole lot of stuff like that in Florida right now. Um, I mean, you have like Worm, which is fucking awesome. You have Body Box, which is on like the mosh end of the spectrum, and then uh, Warforge from Gainesville is fucking dope too. Oh, I gotta check them out. How do you spell that? It's uh W H A R F. L U R C H W H R W H A R F L U C H. Okay. Yep. yep. Awesome. They uh they put out a record called which one is this? Psychedelic Realms of Hell, and it's fucking crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this the Tim, this looks like this is in your wheelhouse. I'm, we, it sounds like it. We played a co-headlining show with them like a week ago, Body Box did, and it was like very, it was so fucking like the juxtaposition, like even like still within the realm of death metal, you know, it was it's fucking ridiculous. I like that stuff that gets on the edges, right? Like kind of pushes the boundaries where you can tell it's it's more different than the same, um, but it definitely has its place. You know, like, I mean, you talk about like bands that have an aesthetic. I always go back to the body, right, which is terrifying it's terrifying to listen to like i he starts screaming and i'm three or four songs in i'm like all right i gotta turn this shit off because i'm just gonna have about yeah. to have a really bad day but it's fucking awesome though i say it i say like there's obviously like in my life i have two big juxtapositions like where dog is somewhere in the middle but i have body box and moodring i mean they are yeah they, polar opposites yeah yeah but with moodring it's like i'm trying to trick you know people into listening to butt rock again with body box <laughs> I'm trying to convince, you know, elitists to listen to Deathcore. So, yeah. there you yeah. go. I figured we, out that band name. It's called Body Void. I do remember some that. of the sickest Doom stuff I heard in a long time. That's fucking sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember this. Yeah. It's kind of horrifying. Oh, yeah. yeah the logo gives away. Eight oh, yeah. minute songs of just fucking. <laughs> nightmare stuff yeah i love that shit. we need to make a playlist for just this album just gonna terrify people uh just this I, episode i've seen this cover they have like a record called like i live under a burning house or something <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <crazy. laughs> i live inside a burning house yeah that's what the record's <laughs> called it's fucking crazy dude <sighs> i wanted to ask you i know we talked about this on messenger so 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 you know you you sent us to empty uh, empty uh, empty me out and I'm like, you know, I listen to it a lot. And then when it officially released, I'm waiting. F- I'm like listening to it. I'm like, wait a minute. What the fuck happened to that part? Like totally threw me off, man. I was like, what the fuck? I like that part. <laughs> what, what, was that a label decision or was that a band decision? Nah, like they don't like try to creatively like skew us at all. I just realized it took almost two minutes for the song to get to the fucking course. Gotcha. And the happens twice. I was kind of like. We should probably do that. That that part still happens. The like, vocals are different, obviously, but it happens again, like towards the end of the song. Still, um, yeah, I don't know. I definitely agree with you. I liked, you know, doing my bullshit, you know, Daryl Palumbo impersonation on that point and stuff, and having some sass with it. But uh, yeah, it just took way too long to get to the chorus. So, think- so you guys pretty much felt like if you're going to release it as a lead-off single, you should probably get to the to the beautiful part quicker 
Yeah, get to the fucking hook, you know. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. We're still, we've been playing it live still. Um, people like that song. It's actually probably my like. It's in my top three least favorite mood ring songs. So yeah, it's a good one, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. We'll see how long it, it survives in the set list. Like after you know, right? New Another music. full length. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna play the tour that we're doing um, in the summer. I think we're gonna do like three off the EP, three new ones. So the tour we're doing is like the other bands are significantly heavier than us for the most part. So it's gonna be a heavier set from us. Are they putting you out with uh, UNFD bands or? No, none of them are. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious if you guys were going to go out with Error because that would be a that would be a great tour. I think so too. I'm like just terrified of like if just speaking candidly and honestly, I'm terrified of mootering touring with metalcore bands. Why? Um, you think the audience won't be forgiving, or I think that audiences are now more open than they've ever been. Like something happened over pandemic, I think, where people are just fucking appreciative of any type of entertainment, you know. Um, I think the ideal model for mootering is to go out with bands that are less heavy than us. And we are the heavy band on the bill. And not to like, like for instance, like say we're out with a pop punk band or something and we play, it's like, holy fuck. You know, like we're one of four and we just play a super heavy fucking set. You know, that person leaves that night and they're like, damn that was that band was like really heavy and still like really pretty at the same time you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i think that fares us better than us being like we're kind of heavy like compared to like a band who's like you know just china you know (laughs) and not that i think era is a band like that era is a great band super talented people i've known jt for at least 10 years now um but i'm just very scared of mootering like getting kind of lumped into that world too i want to be able to like break through like ceilings gotcha gotcha Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i want to like now that you said it that way it makes more way more sense i got you now and maybe i shouldn't be speaking about it as casually like casually as and as candidly as i am right now but it's just i just want like mootering to just constantly have an upward trajectory and like yeah we obviously like flirt with some of the metalcore stuff like even in our music we have now like it does get heavy enough to compete with that at times but I don't like want people to think of us as the band who like the singing, like the singing metalcore band, but they sing the entire time, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. What, so, what, what led to you uh, putting the guitar down? I just wanted to fucking hit the notes and that, that's <laughs> all I wanted to focus on. I just realized that my guitar playing suffers when I'm singing and my singing suffers when I'm playing from guitar. And I'd rather just be good, like really good at one. Instead of like, like all right at both, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. I do want to get, I do want to get back into it. I've been thinking about it a lot lately that when we have time and we can play longer sets and we start doing more headlining stuff, like yeah, there's songs I want to play guitar for. There's certain songs we play live now that I'm like, what the fuck do I do during these parts? <laughs> so. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 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 like gasoline or something like that. For sure, we we opened with gasoline at our last show and it was. It was fucking sick. Yeah, I think that's a perfect opener, actually. We were opening with Empty Me Out, um, which was cool, too. But Gasoline opening just felt, it felt right. Yeah, I, I think when I think about it, too, with Empty Me Out opening, you have that you have that guitar part in the first uh, couple bars of that that I think is a perfect opener as well. Like the, yep. da, na, na, na. I think that's a great opener to get the crowd like intrigued. So yeah, I, either way, I think it's, it works perfect. It's funny because like the full length has definitely like our weirdest material on it. I mean, you said, you know, or, or Sade was brought up earlier. We have a song that sounds like Sade and Ninja Nails like combined on the record. Fuck um, yeah. And we worked with uh, Kel from Modern Air, if you're familiar with that band on that. And, um, mm-hmm. It turned out really fucking cool. It's in my top three in the record for sure. And then we have, there's a song on it that's coming out. That that shot a like Nine Inch Nails song is like a single, and there's another single that's coming out that I got so sick of reading people saying, "Oh, they sound like Deftones and Glassjaw" because of my fucking face. 
yeah. that I was that I, like, okay, here you go. Here's a fucking song that sounds like Death Tones and Glassjaw. So yeah, um, we we were guilty of it. I mean, dude. Yeah. We said that be I said that yeah. in the first place. When I seen the tattoos on you, I was like, I like this fucking guy. <laughs> I gotta talk to him. <laughs> I had I get asked at least once a week. Is that the white pony tattoo? And I say, no, it's a red horse. And they go, okay. And they leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I went to a Chinese buffet yesterday and they asked, and some kid was like, regarding the glass shot tattoo, he was like, he was like, man, are those teardrops? And I was like, yeah, dude. Like, watch the fuck out. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, people no, have something else. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of glass jar, are you going to catch that tour, Hunter? You're going to be around to catch the, the first two albums? I think I'm going to go to Atlanta, especially because Beloved is on it. And oh, fuck me, dude. Like 12, 12 year old Christian Hunter really needs to go see that. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who'd you say he's on it? Beloved? Beloved is playing uh, that that date. <clears throat> Damn. OK. I mean, the Northeast states, the supporters definitely more my speed now. But I'd, I'd love to see it, you know, with Earth Crisis or anyone else that's on it. Incendiary, but, yeah. Yeah, we get incendiary, uh, right, Tim? Yeah. yeah. That's fucking crazy. I love that band. Yeah, the, I, the best I heard hardcore somewhere band right now, I think. I heard somewhere that they're working on they were working on something. I heard somewhere that they were in the studio working on something. Well, yeah, I saw it too. There was some kid who was like, Are y'all ever gonna put out music ever again? And they said, We're never gonna stop. You know, so that made me feel a lot better. I was like, Oh, thank God. Dude, Thousand Miles Stairs is such a fucking record. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a fucking monster. Because my two yeah, band they're... Yeah. I had they're, they're they're weekend dudes and uh they they all have like real real guy jobs so they you know they take their time. I, yeah, I don't blame them. They probably like just save up like mad PTO and are like, "All right, we can go do this now." Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, like I had what's his name on my other show when I was still doing it and he was like, "Dude, we do weekends and like we get dropped off at the office Monday morning and like we just put our suits on like in the Yeah, car he was I was I was there for that. He was telling that story. The one guy's yeah. like an elevator repairman and he literally got dropped off at the truck to get in to go like fix somebody's elevator like yeah. coming off a weekend tour like god bless dude, him dude gets dropped off at wall street he's like all right see you next weekend <laughs> that's fucking crazy yeah i i don't know the last like 10 years you know i had i had incendiary and i had foundation so at least i still have incendiary you know because i i fucking love foundation i'm surprised they haven't done a reunion especially when when the soldier really came into vogue like you kind of thought they would have yeah, it would have been cool. But... I mean, shit, if they convinced Dead Guy to get out of the fucking... But what, what did my buddy Dan call them Dad Guy? Because they're all, like, dad age now. Yeah. But, like, they got, they got them up on stage. Now they're playing a show this... Was it this Friday? I think they're playing a show. Or next Friday up in North Jersey somewhere. And Fuck, I mean... That's so people, sick. People I mean, are we... itching for live music, like you said, so... I mean, we, still, we have bloodlet still, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, this is hard. That hot that this is hardcore set was so was fucking good. Really good. Was really good. Yeah. They're uh they're from like, you know, not far from here. And I've seen them a bunch of times. I saw my torch like right before pandemic, like really shit the bed. So it was fucking it was awesome. Dude, uh, with their torch. Oh, is that is that who's touring with Converge and Miss Sugar? Converge isn't on it anymore, but no, yeah, Converge they're... dropped, remember? Oh, uh, okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna go see that. I haven't seen Mashuga in years, so I, I need to go. <sighs> Who's uh, who is it? Who's playing with them now besides Torch? Did they did they announce the second opener? Because I forgot. Did they Let's fill see. the Converge slot? Maybe not. Uh, Mashuga Tour, 2022. You gonna go to that, Jay? Uh, I might. I mean, I haven't. I'm like Hunter. I haven't seen them since uh, nothing. I think. Damn. But- I saw them with a uh, strapping young lad at the birch hill. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. But Devin Towns is up there yelling at everybody. Fear the skullet. Fear the skullet. Yeah. He was kind of out of his mind back in those days. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, it, I can't tell if they filled the spot. The internet is telling me it's still converged, but I know it's not. True. <laughs> but they're going, who are they going out with? Thou? Is it thou uniform and is it full, full of hell? Full hell. Yeah. That last album was really good. Really, really good. They, they again, they do terrifying shit, too, where you're like, whoa, what the, the fuck? I slept on the last one a little bit. 
Yeah, that uh, Val and the Emma Ruth stuff is so fucking good too. Val did a bunch of Nirvana covers, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. There's fucking that's so sick. Fucking swampy Nirvana covers. I, love I, I there are some bands that are just naturally better when it comes to collaborations. Like it doesn't sound like it was just mashed together. It sounds like bands who really like worked to make that stuff sound full. I mean, I just saw full on uh, I think it was Instagram full of hell just did some stuff with nothing from Philly. So I, I think saw- that'll that'll be an interesting co- uh, collaboration. Y'all have no idea how much I love that band. What nothing? Oh yeah, yeah. That last album is great. It's so fucking good. Like, yeah, it was way better than the one before that, I I think. I, I think so, yeah. I completely agree. I actually hadn't liked a Nothing Falling in a long time. I did like the worst split, you know, and just kind of random one-off things here and there. But, um, yeah, The Great Dismal is a crazy fucking record. I'm going to put both of you onto something since we mentioned Nirvana. It's a band called Cuss. Um, their record is called Wilt. Um, they're from Chicago. Virtually fucking no one knows this band. This EP is so good. It sounds like Kirk Cobain style vocals with like Alice in Chains like inspired riffing, but the mix is like heavy as fuck. Is and it it's just C U S S. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like cigarettes. The fucking band, and it's funny because. If you go look at it on Spotify, the fans also like our my three bands up top because I listen to this band every fucking day. <laughs> and then it's literally everything else I listen to afterwards. I mean, like I said, this band sounds like Nirvana and they've got fucking Vomit Forth and they're fucking, you know, related. That's kind of wild. Um, literally the only one that makes sense in here at all is Mootering and uh, Bleed from Texas. The rest is just like, you know, hardcore bands. Are they from Texas? Yeah, it's uh, they have, if I'm not mistaken, they have members of Narrowhead. Oh, I was just listening to Satisfaction today. That's a great record. They're most underrated as well. Yeah, that Bleed EP was in my favorite records last year too. It's so mm, fun. I remember my, that. Yeah, my girlfriend and I listen to it so much. I want to fly that band to Florida to do some stuff like really bad. Yeah, right Right before I stopped doing Ill Street, I was going to hit them up, and then I was just like, eh, I'm not going to hit them up and waste their time. But that EP, man, it's so fucking good, like you said. I've you been looking have... for that stuff for a while, and it's fine. <laughs> I'm finally finding that. <laughs> Fans have... also... Go they, on. Dab... they dabble in new metal a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Fans also like Dog, Body Box, Mood Ring, Momentum, Gates to Hell, Dead to Fall, MH Chaos, Bleed, Vatican, 200 Stab Wounds, Seven Angels, Seven Plagues, Foreign Hands, Soul Blind, I mean, Fuming Mouth, Vomit Forth, Age of Apocalypse, Weekend Nachos, like, holy shit, like. Yeah. Speaking of 200 Stab Wounds, what a fucking record that is. DM of, DM of the year for me last year. Like, wow. it's, it's unfucking real uh, they're, they're so nice. That was on my list of stuff I didn't get to spend enough time with. So like 200 Stab Wounds, The Armed. There's a bunch of albums that I just didn't get a chance to listen to enough to really form an opinion. I liked what I heard. It's so fucking sick. Yeah, go back and listen to that, Jay. It's really All good, right, man. I'll, I'll dust that playlist off. Okay. The yes. Rivers of Nile record, go back and listen to that, too. I did. Oh, I listened to that when you suggested it when we did that episode with Adam. Like, Adam. that was one of your picks. And it was pretty good. Like, I enjoyed it. I did. Yeah, death metal with fucking saxophones and shit. I mm-hmm, love it. Mm-hmm. It's great. Uh, I told you lately, it's been all uh, it's been all Worm Shepherd, and then just a random assortment of like random new metal shit, like stuff to go when we dig backwards. Like, oh, Taproot again? Ah, fuck it, I'll listen to it. Whatever. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been that Worm Shepherd album, and uh, you know, Misery Index just announced they're doing another album, and then everybody and their mother is putting something out. Origin's been in the studio, mm. uh, the Fetus is in the studio, so it's like, my lord, like that would be fucking amazing. And they're they're going out and they're they're playing New York, uh, North Jersey. I got to drive up to fucking Clifton to see that Origin Misery Index tour, and it's the day mm. after the uh, California takeover. I've played Clifton before a long time ago. Yeah, dingbats. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my PTSD is sinking in. <laughs> yeah, it's not a 
It's an interesting, interesting venue. Jersey will definitely give you PTSD. Uh, and that's like deep North Jersey. It's that's Essex County. So that's up there. Well, we were friends with our, with this dude from Florida who moved to Jersey. And I think he lives out in uh, Arizona now. Who's a promoter? Uh, Kevin Oakley. Okay. The guy who does, um, didn't he do Mosh for Pause? That was him, right? Yeah. 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 So Kevin, like, even if like the show sucked, like, Kevin always took care of us. You know what I mean? So it was good shit. I believe it was a Kevin Oakley show that I met uh joey from the banner app for the first time i was sitting around talking about frailty and he was like yeah yeah that's that's my band i was like oh shit because that's like my one of my favorite records ever so oh for oh the record for okay. cool cool yeah, yeah I, I just had jake on not too long ago from banner and uh apparently they're putting a new record out i'm stoked to hear it yeah, yeah frailty, frailty's a big one for me especially with, like when i was getting into you know hardcore i was like wait so this is this still has breakdowns all right i can listen to this yeah because i asked him i'm like anything new he's like actually yeah he's just like <laughs> i don't know when but yeah we're working on it i was like oh that's exciting okay so fucking sick yeah he, he said he's like dude joey's never gonna stop he just takes his time and does what he wants and we tour sometimes I, I, and he's... it's a passion product at this point you know yeah 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 definitely but, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of bands that are going to come out of the woodwork like, holy shit, where did that come from? I am waiting to hear what Heaven's Die is doing because I fucking love that EP. And you with... What'd you say, Hunter? Are they doing something? I don't know. I mean, they just put that last EP on vinyl. Um, and with Age of Apocalypse, that quasi Life of Agony sound is kind of getting some spin. So I think they're oh, they're... Yeah. I mean, when they played, I saw them at um, in Philly at the pharmacy with uh, shit. Who was it? It was Wrist Meat Razor, Heaven's Die. Oh, I forget who else was on that bill. Um, oh, I think it was um, it was Purity, wasn't Rest it? and Piss, I think. And, but it was packed, like it was literally packed for them. So I don't know, man. I kind of hope they're 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 doing something because I thought that last EP was great. Yeah, they were. Speaking of. Uh... Age of Apocalypse. I want to preface this really fast. I love that fucking record, but some irony involving hardcore is that like Age of Apocalypse is like Harold is like fuck yeah, let's go right now. But no one like you know Twitching Tongues got shit on so much. Yeah, and it's it's crazy to see because Twitching Tongues is such a good fucking band, and so is Age of Apocalypse. Like don't get me wrong, but like it's it's wild to see like the opinion sway so hard. Like, like, right. Right, those operatic vocals where everybody was kind of weirded by them when Twitching Tongues was doing it. Now, all of a sudden, they're in vogue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that, that happens all the time mm -hmm. in genres, though. Mm -hmm. Espe uh, especially am, especially uh, new, when the new metal stuff comes back. Everybody, I'm like, wait yep. a minute. I am convinced that VOD, if they had been two or three years later, they would have been absolutely massive because their sound, everybody turned. Think about that Blood Simple album and then give it two years later and everybody bit that sound. Dude, I fucking love that band. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Tim Williams is a, is a white whale for us. True. Yeah, I, that's good shit. Be, be, before, before we get out of here, because I just realized I can't believe an hour and 20 minutes went by already. So you commented on the glass jaw thing. Now, I I want to ask since since we're on here and we're we're gonna talk about it. I know you said that worship and tribute was the better record, but to explain a little bit why, because I, I like to get people's opinion on this. Okay, so in terms of songwriting, it's just there. I mean, the first half of that record. Okay, this is a tough one for me because, like. Do I think that Silence has, like, as a whole, like, has a good vibe that starts from, like, top to finish? Yeah. Um, I do. And I think it's more cohesive than Worship and Tribute is. Like, I know that, personally, after the second I get past Stuck Pig on Worship and Tribute, I'm like, all right, I'm good. You know? I'm mm -hmm. done. Like, that's where the album ends for me. Um, but... I mean, the first fucking part of that record. Are you kidding me, dude? Like, yeah. yeah. It's just insane. Like, it's also just, it's more accessible. It's still weird as fuck. You know, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's weird. I mean, trying to get like friends in the glass jaw is, it's hard. You know, I, 
when I first started dating my girlfriend, I was like, the Deftones. She's like, I love Deftones. I was like, cool. I was like, all right, well, this is Glass Shaw. And if you don't like it, I won't be upset because not many, not many people I, I know do. Mm. And she was like, this is fucking wild. Now she likes it, which is fucking dope. But um, yeah, man, Worship and Tribute is just, is, is the record for me. Like, it just is. I mean, to reference Stuck Pick again, that song is so fucking weird, but so heavy. I mean, Aptos Mill is just classic. I think that my unpopular opinion is if they would have made Our Color Green and uh, Coloring Book one record it, instead of two separate EPs, it'd be their best album. D- yeah, I would not disagree with that. Yeah, I love them EPs. I, I mean, it's, it's fucking cra- crazy. Like, Junkies is such a good fucking song. You know, it has their, like, most dancey and, like, experimental stuff, you know, on Our Color Green, obviously. But then, Wait, I have it backwards. You understand what I'm saying, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah we got you. Yeah. If they were together, in my opinion, that would be the best record. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. See, I see a lot of people talking about the lyrics on everything, and I'm like, I, don't, I haven't, I don't know them like by uh, heart, but like, get over it. Yeah, get I mean, over it. Was it. Twenty years ago, art, art is representative of the time it was made. He was a fucking high school kid who just got dumped, right? So you'd be a little fucking angry and probably a little immature as well. I think. Um, I personally prefer Silence as an album, um, but I think Hunter nails it with what they did in Worship and Tribute is them getting their most avant-garde and weird, but in a very interesting way to the point where you you, 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 you went from song to song because you weren't really sure where they were going to go next, right? Because Tip Your Bartender starts off with that monster guitar riff, right? Yeah. And then what's right after that? Is it Aptos Mill? And then there's like uh, Cosmopolitan, Blood, Cosmopolitan Blood Loss. Yeah, you're then, forgetting... You're forgetting a very good song on that record. Track two is Moo Empire. Yes, Moo Empire. That's it. Um, that song is fucking crazy. And then like track seven is is Radio Cambodia, which is them going full speed, you know, full tilt. And it's like uh, they really were doing some really unique, weird shit. And it, and, and, it, and it worked. My opinion is swayed too, though, because with their best record, like being works much to me because Pink Roses is my favorite song. Like, it's just a good fucking song. Um, I don't know. Like, think about it. Like, tip. You start the record with "Tip Your Bartender," you get into it, and you hit that course, and it's so fucking catchy. You can't understand a fucking word he's saying, but you know that melody. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. like it, it's that good. I don't know. I have a fucking clue what he is saying. <laughs> so, you know, I I remember reading the lyrics for Aptos Mill" for the first time when I was, I mean, junior high, trying to figure it out, and I listened to it. And I'm like. Oh yeah, that's what you're saying. Because I had no, I didn't have an idea. <laughs> you know? Right. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm like stuck in the middle. I can't. I just can't pick which one I like better because there's so many hits for me on both of them. But I, I do think that they're both records where they're the strongest at the beginning. It's funny because uh, Charlie from Bexas was the other person who commented on it right above me. Yeah. And I, was, I was like, I gotta come in for backup. I, I fuck with Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of vexes, he uh, enough fucking around already for fuck's sake. W- Dude, what, what is going on? It's two fucking records at once. It's like an, a ridiculous amount of music they're about to release. Oh, he's putting out two records. That's right. Okay. It's it's two. It's it's a lot of music. I mean, I know there are long songs in that thing too. He he showed me like snippets. It's fucking incredible. Mm, can't wait. It, it's nuts. What before we go? What what are y'all's opinions on Material Control? I think Shira is the best Glass Shaw song ever made. It's up there. I really, I thought I wouldn't say it was a return to form, but I really liked it. I thought it was probably the most solid stuff that they'd done in, in quite a bit. Um, what was the the first EP after? I know we just got it backwards. The first EP after um, Worship and Tribute was was that Coloring Book? I don't chronologically. I'm not sure. It was the the first one. I I think it's the it was a natural continuation from the first EP after Worship and Tribute, whatever that one was. Um, I really kind of enjoyed it, but I I honestly miss that uh, the Todd Weinstock the weird noodly soundscape shit that always like it, it was very prevalent in Worship and Tribute. The shit that was on in the background, I yeah. kind of miss that. I think if they, I mean, if they could find, I don't know what happened with those fences and if they could even be mended, but. I think if they could find a way to incorporate some of that, it would be really, really fucking monstrous. I have no idea. 
Yeah, material control is super hit and miss for me personally. Like, I love Shira so much. I think Golgotha is a crazy song too, but it's pretty, it's 50 50 for me. Yeah, yeah. New, new White Extremity and then into Shira, I think is one of the best one two punches in a record in a long yeah. time. You're right. It's just, yeah, they're just like fucking shredding, like in their own way the entire time. Like, where, like, Daryl finds melody to follow vocally on that record, I have no fucking clue. I'm just like, mm. like you're just swinging the abyss right now, and somehow it's working. <laughs> yeah, so- and then, what's his name live, man? He's just in the fucking zone 100% of the time. Uh, oh. What's his name, Beck? Uh, Justin yeah. Beck, yeah. He has he so is- much swag, too. Yeah, he's just a fucking amazing guitar. Like, the when, he- when you see them live, man, he's just, like, he- I don't think he misses a fucking note, and he just fucking... He's off doing his thing. To here, yeah. And it's like, he's just swing. Oh, I love it. It's crazy to like watch, you know, from the past to now, the amount, like someone like injected that guy with like a, like a swag needle or something, like something <laughs> happened. Like it, things have changed drastically. Yeah. Um, and I like the one drummer they had for that tour before that too. I forget what his fucking name is, man. The guy black from dude. Dillinger? Billy, nah, the, not Billy Reimer. No. The dude, the black dude they had. The hell was his name again? Hmm. He play. He like. He adds like a certain flair to them songs that I really like, man. A lot of people complained about that drummer. I remember seeing it, and I was like, "He's great. He's fucking really good for that band." I agree. You didn't, you didn't like him, Jay? No, I thought he was good. I thought oh, he was okay. good. I thought you shook your head. Okay. Mm-mm, no, no, no. I thought he was. I don't understand why people would complain. I mean, all That's the live enough. videos that I caught, he sounded pretty damn good yeah he puts a great he puts a great bounce to them not that they didn't have a great bounce before but i think he yeah does that band justice that uh that tour hits atlanta which is like eight hours from me but i think i'm gonna go but i think i need to buy my tickets like today if i'm going to yeah, so. you probably should yeah did yeah. you get yours tim i did i'll get it <sighs> slacker ours yeah, is on a monday night it's kind of brutal Ugh. yeah word It'll be worth I, it. I appreciate y'all having me again. Yeah, no, dude, thank you for coming on, man. Um, so, Hunter, was, where where uh, people want to find more information about you, they want to check out the band, they want to check out your studio, where do they go? Um, all right. So, first off, uh, my studio is at The Swamp Sound on Instagram. Um, and soon that'll link you to a nice website where we're starting to sell samples. And it's going to be highly interactive. The homie Alex did it, and it looks fucking incredible. Um, my personal is at Hunty Young, H-U-N-T-I, Young. Um, and then Moodering is at Moodering Rock on absolutely everything. All the other bands are just the name. If you look up the name, you're going to find it. You know, awesome. at FL, at Dog, E-C-M-C. Like, it's it's easy. Cool. So. Perfect, perfect. Well, we want to thank you coming on. Uh, thank you for coming on again, Hunter. This is always a good time. Next time we'll do, uh, we're going to put you on the spot and make you rank all of uh, Suffocation's records from <laughs> um, worst to best. We'll watch your hair like slowly start smoldering while we have you do that. Um, so, Honestly. What'd you say? I'm, I could do that pretty quickly. I'm, I'm uh, strongly opinionated. So it, <laughs> it <laughs> all right, be. so we're, we're going to call you on that. We're definitely going to call you on that. So uh, again, we want to thank Hunter for coming on. Tim and I want to thank everybody for tuning in, watching, listening again. Uh, Newbreedpodcast at gmail.com. You know, Newbreed underscore podcast on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, We're kind of active. We're having a good time. So follow us. Check us out. Check out Hunter's stuff. And until next time, this is a Newbreed saying cheers. Later. Peace.